I asked a little earlier on, do you know where the biggest voting station is for this year's general election? Is it in Soweto, Zhubei Park? Perhaps you think it's in Guamashu in KZN or Langa, Cape Town. No, it turns out it's in London, the United Kingdom. In London alone, uh, there are about uh, 19,518 South Africans registered to vote. It makes it the largest voting station for this upcoming election. And South African citizens are expected to make their mark this weekend. And in preparation, the Independent Electoral Commission says it has begun shipping voting materials, including booths, ballot boxes and papers. Uh, We're joined now by the IEC's Deputy Chief Electoral Officer, Mawetu Mosri, uh, to tell us about the state of readiness for international voting and, of course, what will happen in the next 13 days. Uh, Thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, this morning. Um, the clock is ticking, is ticking, tick tock, tick tock. What is our state of readiness? Uh, morning, uh, Mr. Bingo and uh, listeners. Indeed, we are 13 days to go to the 29th and uh, the first votes will be cast this weekend uh, in about 111 uh, missions of South Africa uh, outside of the country and um, in about uh, 11 days the um, uh, first votes in the country will be cast with the special votes on the 27th as well as uh, on the 28th and we have about 1.6 million South Africans who have registered uh, for special votes and then the big day where we expect the rest of the 26 million of our 27 million to visit uh, voting stations and cast their votes so it's all systems go in our plans uh, for the 111 voting uh, this weekend uh, we are basically now confirming that all materials shipped to them have arrived in correct quantities as we sent them and we've been getting very good reports and we are ready for this weekend in out-of-country voting stations. And just to be clear, we mean 111 foreign missions around the world. That is correct, Bonnie. It's the 111 missions outside of the country. The UK gets two voting days? UK gets two voting days and uh, with your intro it is true it has become the largest voting station for us as the South African Electoral Commission. Uh, It used to be to be park at about 15,000 registered voters but uh, London UK has become a 19 thousand voting uh, station uh, that has 19,000 registered voters and uh, on top of that we also have uh, just about 5,000 people who gave us notice that they will also be voting in London for this election so that takes London expected voters to 24,000 uh, uh, South Africans that will go vote there and uh, when we looked at the logistics, the capacity of our mission in London, we felt that uh, it, it maybe one day will not be enough. And also the restrictions, the municipal restrictions in that country uh, were putting some limits on the numbers of people. And we felt that let's then provide for a second day. And But we still urge South Africans to try and utilize the first day as much as possible, Saturday the 18th. Just tell me about the process of securing the ballots once they've been cast, once voting is over. Uh, they will obviously, as I understand, be brought back and counted here in South Africa. Just explain how that will work. Yes, those votes uh, from all the 111 missions will return to the country to be uh, counted here in the country uh, in the presence of party agents here in the country. Let's uh, reverse back to saying voting out of country. We would welcome political parties or contestants to send uh, their party agents. Some of them have indeed notified us that... uh, 
they do have South Africans in those countries who are willing to be their party agents, and we are welcoming that. Uh, when voting is concluded overseas, we will seal all the used ballots uh, in our uh, special security bag uh, in the presence of party agents uh, so that they can record seals and other things that we put on that package that then gets sent back to the country. And when it arrives in the country, it's a special cargo that uh, is under security until it reaches our storage point and wait for the counting day, which will be the 30th of May. Whilst I have you on the line, I'm still getting questions about exactly what the ballot papers are going to look like for this year's election. We've got three. Uh, Can you once again explain to us how it's all going to work? Um, Maybe let's start uh, with a bit of uh, education uh, on this one and say we have nine provincial legislatures in the country all of them have a ballot paper of their own. And that ballot paper, uh, as we now know, that it will be contested by political parties and independents. So when we asked for candidate nomination, uh, there were independents nominated and there were political parties nominated. So that would be your first ballot paper, which is for the province where you reside. Now, if you are not going to be in your province, you will not get your provincial ballot if you are in in any other province in the country. The second ballot, uh, Bohani, is for you to elect provincial leaders who must go to the National Assembly, which we call the regional ballot, and it will, it will be yellow in color. That ballot for the National Assembly allows you to choose between political parties and independents that will go representing your province, which we call a region, at the National Assembly. And then your third ballot would be a national ballot where you now as a voter look at South Africa and say, this is the party I prefer to govern the country and you choose their a party so in terms of the candidates submitted to us they are candidates for the first ballot in your province your a list for the second ballot region to a national assembly and then your national ballot. So when we allocate seats, we will allocate them according to the choices that the voters will make on the 29th of May. Now, on our three ballots, the most uh, different uh, ballot that I would love that no voter is confused about it is the national ballot, which is a double column ballot uh, because we had 52 political parties and there wasn't a long enough paper to accommodate them on a single column. So we've made it a double column. So make sure you see the center line as a voter and know where your party is and see the box where you need to put your X. And for the blind and uh, those with unsteady hand, we're providing for them a double ballot uh, universal uh, ballot template that will assist them to mark their ballots without uh, overlapping to another political party gotcha. because we would want yeah all right uh, just quickly uh, there was of course some concern because as you say you've already for example shipped out voting materials including the ballots uh, the papers and the booths etc there was some concern that with this matter in the constitutional court still sort of hanging over what happens next uh, you might have to reprint papers and my sense is regardless of what the court decides uh, the papers will stay as they are because uh, to be the face of a political party doesn't necessarily mean one is going to parliament am i correct 
You are very correct. Um, the matter before the court uh, will not affect the look uh, of ballots or the face of leaders in the in the ballot. It remains the same. Uh, what we're dealing with is assuming a seat uh, at the at, at the national assembly, and and that's the matter that the court is considering right now. The other matters that could have affected the ballot have been concluded by the by the by the electoral court and therefore we have no worries which is why we printed all the ballots and they are now all being distributed to our secure storage points with a high security around them which we we are at this stage satisfied that uh, almost uh, yeah. 60% of our provinces are ready to go 14 days to go. Are you sleeping at night? Oh, yeah, we still have a good sleep. I think uh, <laughs> it, it did help that uh, we do planning uh, over 18 to 24 months. Uh, and, and as we conclude this election, we will have to start planning for local government elections in 2026. So we continue to operate at reasonably normal uh, uh, pace. I think the challenges are those that are political and in the environment, uh, much more on uh, misinformation and disinformation. And obviously, the detractors that never stop to say bad things about the commission. Yes, indeed. It wouldn't be an election if they weren't there, would it? Mawetu Mosri is the (laughs) IEC's Deputy (laughs) Chief (laughs) Electoral (laughs) Officer. Thank you for your time. Current events. Developing stories. Tough questions. Your voice making a difference. This is Breakfast with Bongani Bingwa.